Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Hello, I'm Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. Today I'm at the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada Research Station in Lethbridge. I'm with Harpinder Randawa, and we are here to talk about uh, uh, Harpinder's work with wheat. Just this summer, they finally sequenced the wheat genome. Uh, the wheat is what you work on. What kinds of uh, impacts will have finally having this sequenced have on your work? Well, it's very good news. They've been long waiting. It took a long time to sequence wheat genome, as you probably already aware of. It's a huge genome, mm -hmm. over yeah. 17 gigabase pairs. So, and, and that that took a long time and a long effort. So it was an international effort to sequence wheat genome because the beast was so big, so you had to tackle yeah. tackle that way. So eventually, uh, this summer, we have a sequence available, and it's all finished. And what it does mean to us as a breeder, um, because no, it gave all the roadmap for all the genes, the right. agronomic or disease resistance or quality related traits that we have. We work, we try to uh, incorporate in our breedings, uh, in our new varieties. So that gave us a roadmap for all the gene and access to all the gene. Before we were using markers that we may be close to or vicinity of those genes. And now, with the genome sequence available, we can uh, exactly pinpoint where we can develop those markers, gene-specific marker, right from within the gene. And, and okay, I just want to stop you there for a second because uh, one of the things that people have an image of is the fellow standing in the field with the with the pen and paper, and that's still vitally important. But a lot of the work that you do is actually creating markers so that you can predict things. That's, yes. that's a big part of what you do, right? Yeah. So in in breeding, we look at a developing breeding tool. So yes. genome would be genome sequence availability will be another breeding tool that we have with us now. Yes. Um, and then because we rely on many different tools and genome will be one of the tool uh, yeah. among the many other tools that we could use it so this way uh, instead of selecting and uh, doing selection uh, in a later generation based on the phenotypic uh, data we can pinpoint and select for desirable trait right from the beginning right from the F1 using tiny piece of a leaf or a DNA and then run our own gene specific marker that is relevant to our breeding program and then we can uh, we can select for those and that certainly increase the selection efficiency so we can discard the undesirable type very early on and, and carry the d most favorable and desirable type genotypes uh, in our breeding program. So let's just uh, explain for a second what the difference between phenotype and genotype is because people say it very quickly and uh, it, it helps when people really understand what the, yeah. the two basic terms. So genotype, what do we call genetic makeup? What yeah. are the DNA? What are the gene in it? Yeah, yeah. But phenotype is, is DNA plus all these uh, expression of a trait, which is also uh, affected by the growing condition or the, by the environment. So it's right. a phenotypic expression. How does plant look like? Like you know, or yeah. how does it behave under certain condition or certain stress condition? Uh, so that's uh, that's the main difference between genotype and phenotype. So genotype basically what are the DNA's marker uh, makeup of his and phenotypic what the plant look like eventually. Yeah. Um, so you can do all these sequencing and all these analysis, and you know. Uh, you can select for, but eventually you have to test in the field and look at this uh, potential, whether it really validate what you expected or not, and then you have to really, really do by phenotyping. So right. you can use all these available tools, but at the end of the day, still you have to validate with the phenotyping means testing under different environment, testing under disease nurseries, and selecting for resistance, and then looking for best available genotypes. So the phenotyping still is vital to do but the genotyping and, and having the sequence mapped really cuts off a lot of time in terms of, and you're able to get to the to desired uh, uh, varieties a lot faster. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So phenotyping is still the king, so we still have to uh, ve test all these genetic marker and then, then we validate them in the field and then you look at how they interact in a different growing condition. Is it dry condition or is it disease environment? or is a high moisture content or whatever environment condition they're going and then we yeah. need to test and validate that one day. Yeah. Okay, I just want to thank Harpinder for being with us today at the uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Research Station in, in Lethbridge. Thanks Harpinder. Thank you, you're welcome. Yeah.